Hello there, uh, my name is Lushin and I'm an online tutor of math and physics and this is another AP pre-calc video but type 4. Uh, one of my students based of Texas asked me this so I just thought to make a video on this. So this is uh, this is this uh, window is just for you to capture the question if you want to. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and uh, start solving the questions one by one. Okay, so part A, they're talking about now, this is no calc, by the way. Uh, the functions g and h is given by g, da, 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 h is this. So solve for gx is equal to 2 for the values of x in the domain of g. Okay, all right, I can do that. So um, we are given that gx is equal to 2. So gx is equal to 2. And what is g of x? That is log of x plus 5 with a base of 4. And that is equal to 2. What do we do from here? We do away with the log by taking anti log both the sides. So, how do we take the anti log? This guy inside just remains as it is, and what is on the base is thrown over on the other side such that the guy which is on the right gets on the power. I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm just going to write that. 4 is thrown over on the other side, so 4 comes here, and this 2 comes on the power of 4. So, this is how it works. So this becomes x plus 5 is equal to 16. So the value of x is 11. And 11 is definitely in the domain of logarithms, right? It, it is in the domain. So we are sorted. All right. Part, uh, part 2. Now they are asking us to solve for hx is equal to 1 in the interval of 0 to 2 pi. Okay, I can do that. So hx is equal to 1, which means that um, 2 cos square x is equal to 1, which means that cos square x is equal to 1 over 2, which means that cos x is equal to, what do you think I will write here, guys? Okay, this is a pitfall because I've seen students writing 1 over root 2, which is da 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 incomplete because you have missed a plus and minus over here. So if you want to put a plus and minus and you write your AP, you're going to get half credit potentially. You may not even get any credit. I'm not sure. But if this is, let's say, a one credit, they will not even offer you one, I think, because your answer is incomplete. Anyway. So uh, we have taken this into account. If you're not really okay with a rational term at the bottom, I can rewrite this as root two over two. And I think this is pretty famous on a unit circle, right? Plus and minus means all the four quadrants will be in the answer. So what will be the answers? I know that root two over two is like pi over four, right? So it's gonna be pi over four. It's gonna be pi over four, three pi over four, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 all are the allowed values of x and we are going to stop here because they only need uh, you know between 0 and 2 pi so we are not going to encroach these boundaries i hope this makes sense let's move on to the next part okay once again, g is this, k is this so they are they are asking us to rewrite j as a single natural logarithm natural logarithm minded ln without negative exponents in any part of the expression your results should be of the form ln expression okay all right uh question is on properties of logs guys so um i'm gonna say that g of x is i'm just gonna rewrite first that's natural log of x plus three minus two times natural log of x or ln x minus three times ln of x minus two um, if you're not comfortable in condensing this in a single shot, I would recommend that do that. I would recommend to do that in pieces if you're not really, you know, in the comfort zone, uh, uh, in a comfort zone with this, this log. So a log has a property that this guy sitting outside can jump inside and become the power of the inside thing. So I'm going to do that. And likewise, I'm going to do this as well. Now, log A minus log of B, log of A over B. So I'm going to write that, that this is log of A over B and minus of log of, I'm, I'm saying log, but I meant natural log, uh, minus ln x minus 2 whole cube. And once again, uh, ln A minus ln B is uh, ln A over B. So this is where you have to be a little careful because you have multi-label fractions. So I'm going to say, write it very carefully here. x plus 3 over x squared, which is the first guy over here. 
over the second guy, which is x minus 2 whole cube. Obviously, this looks really, uh, but not pleasant, definitely. So I'm going to use something which is called a KCF rule, keep, change, flip, uh, to redecorate this. So if you use keep, change, flip, that's going to look like log of, um, log uh natural log of uh keep change flip means i'm gonna keep this i'm gonna keep this guy i'm gonna change the division to multiplication and i'm gonna flip the other party which is one over x minus two cube okay i think this is my answer right ln of x plus three over x square x minus two whole cube i don't think so we can decorate this any further yeah and do we have any negative exponents not really so yes i think i'm gonna box it up and that is my final answer okay all right uh not having a space so let's move on to the next page and try the next question uh part two uh they are saying that rewrite kx is an expression in which cos appears only once and no other trick function is involved Okay, all right. So I know that sine can be easily converted into cos. In fact, not sine, sine square to be more precise. Uh, courtesy, Pythagorean identity. Uh, Pythagorean identity suggests that sine square x plus cos square x is equal to one, which means that sine square x is equal to one minus cos square x. Let's replace this with 1 minus cos square x over 1 minus cos x. Uh, they need only cos, right? They don't need cos square. So uh, please be advised. If you leave your answer like this, you will not get any points for it. You you, you need to get rid of this cos square somehow. Uh, I mean, what do you think? Numerator ringing any bells? Any identity? Algebra? SAT? difference of perfect square right because one can be written as one square and one square minus cos square is like a square minus b square and a square minus i can write it for you uh, a square minus b square is a minus b times a plus b so i'm gonna use that and i'm gonna say that this is a minus b times a plus b over 1 minus cos x is as it is. These two are crossed out. So my final answer is 1 plus cos x. Just going to make some space here. I think you already got the idea. So kx is equal to 1 plus cos x. Just going to box it up. All right, excellent. Last part, part C remaining. Okay, uh, the function m is given by this and find all the input values in the domain of whether zero or okay. okay. Output value is zero. What is the output value? Obviously the value of m. So this is a, a simple question of, of, solving a, of solving a trig equation of cos 2x plus sine 2x, sorry, cos 2x plus cos x is equal to zero. So the output is zero. Well, cos 2x, ring any bells, double angle identities because this is twice of the angle. Cos 2x definitely has three double angle identities, but I'm interested in the one which only gives me in terms of cos so that I don't really want to introduce another trick function over here um, uh, because I already have a cos here. So uh, cos 2x in terms of only cos is 2 cos square x minus 1 and plus cos x is as it is. So this becomes 2 cos square x plus cos x minus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, this is a uh, quadratic equation. If you don't see the quadratic yet, uh, make a simple substitution of cos x as let's say y. So this becomes 2y square plus y minus 1 is equal to 0, uh, which, uh, okay which means that it can be factorized, right? I think 2y squared plus 2y minus y minus 1 is equal to 0. Guys, if you don't understand this step, just let me know in the comment section. Uh, 2y is taken as a common factor from here. I'm left with y plus 1, and minus is taken as a common factor from the other. So I'm again left with y plus 1, and that is equal to 0. So y plus 1 is once again taken as a common factor. I'm left with 2y minus 1. So in general, uh, I mean, all in all, I want to factorize like this. Now, if you if you do not want to apply uh, this method, if you want to use maybe slide and divide or anything else, that's totally fine. What's important is you should arrive here 
And now we're going to use the zero product property, which says that if the multiplication of two numbers is zero, then the first number should be zero. Our expression should be zero, and the second expression should also be zero, which means that y is negative one and y is one over two. All right, running out of space here. So moving this over on the left. Okay, so what is y, by the way? I don't need y, I need x. So y is cos x right this is where we made that substitution so we're going to reverse engineer now uh, because cos x is minus one and what is when is cos x minus one uh, remember they are asking in the domain of m so don't make the mistake of only answering in quad uh, in the unit circle uh, this has to be a generalized solution because the domain of m is all real numbers cos is minus one in in the in the unit circle cos is minus one when x is pi so the generalized solution will be 2k pi plus pi that's solution number one solution number two is cos x is equal to one over two so cos x is one over two in two cases right uh, uh, uh either either 60 degree or pi over three pi over three is 60 that's quadrant one and then quadrant four as well right which is five pi over three so what is the generalized solution for these two? Once again, it will be 2k pi plus pi over 3 and 2k pi plus 5 pi over 3. So these two are uh, the solutions for the other one. So together, 1, 2, and 3. There are three solutions, generalized solutions for um, this quadratic, sorry, this trigonometric equation. Don't forget to mention in your APs what is k because that's something which you have introduced. So you should write here clearly that k is an integer. I don't have space here. We should all write. I'll just write here that k is an integer. All right, guys, any doubts, please let me know in the comment section. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye-bye.